Hi, this is Bubby. Welcome to Bubby Pins. What this YouTube channel is about is to just try and bring you some of the life hacks that I found over my lifetime. Some I've learned, some I figured out, some you probably know, but just in case, I just thought I'd put them here and we'll see what happens. If anybody can figure out for me how to get this camera so it's not reversed, I would love that life hack. But until we get there, I'll be going like that a lot. <laughs> I apologize in advance. The first five years of life. That's what I want to talk about today. The first five years of life. One of the issues a lot of parents call me up. I have a, a, a service, Bubby 613. People call me and ask me questions and I try and give them my life hacks. And one of the questions that comes in the most often is how do I put my kid to sleep? just doesn't listen. So the problem is more aptly that it, not how do I put my kid to sleep, although that's your problem. The problem is why doesn't your kid listen? That's the problem, right? That's the real problem. Because why they don't want to go to sleep? Uh, who wants to go to sleep? Oh, uh, you do. You're tired. I get it. <laughs> but when life is so much fun and life is so exciting, all you want to do is just keep learning and that's why they don't want to go to sleep it, it makes sense but why don't they listen to you that's the bigger problem that's the bigger problem maybe they've learned that they don't have to listen to you until you start pulling your hair out and screaming at them because maybe that's when they really get the message <laughs> maybe they learned that if you say it three times, you really mean it. You know, Whatever your pattern is, that's what they've learned. So here's a, a way to get a child to go to sleep. Here's a little pattern for going to sleep. But more important, figure out your pattern to get your child to listen to you. Are you talking while they're watching TV? Because if you're talking while they're watching TV, they're not going to listen to you. Are you asking them to turn off something in the middle of the show because you just walked in the house and they're not going to listen? Are they in the middle of coloring and you're like, okay, now stop, let's go, we're leaving? They're not going to listen. Nobody would. We want to finish whatever we're doing, right? So a warning is nice. Not a warning, but like a, a heads up. Heads up, we're leaving in five minutes. So you can finish doing what you're doing. I'll tell you when we're leaving in two, right? That gives them so much respect. It helps them put everything. We're going to sleep. Not now. <laughs> we're not going to bed yet, but we are going to sleep within the half hour. We are going to be going to bed. We, not I, we. We're going to be going to bed. So just know you have a half an hour now to wind up. It sets the mood, and when you say that, turn off some lights, change the setting in the house. I like to have bedtime routines. Bedtime routine means that they know every night the same thing's gonna happen. They're gonna get that half an hour warning, then they're gonna get the 15 minute, then they're gonna say, okay, it's gonna be in 10 minutes. Oh, here, this is your two minute warning. And at two minutes, while you're, what you were doing during that, time period is setting the mood, turning down highlights, putting on low lights, turning off TVs, putting on some soft music, setting up a bubble bath, bringing them upstairs, getting them into the tub. I didn't say go upstairs and brush your teeth and I'll come up, right? Getting them into the, come on now we're going, right? Taking them by the hand, tell them a story as you're walking up. Oh, did I ever tell you the one about? And tell them a story about when you were little. They love to hear when you were little stories. And as you're telling them the story, you can tell them a story of what's going to happen tomorrow. Letting them know what's going to happen tomorrow sort of brings them to the idea that today's over. And help them get out of their clothes and into the tub. This is five and under. And as they're in there, sing to them as you're washing them down. Don't expect them to wash themselves. Please never leave them unattended. And then 
right before they get out, get that towel ready. And when they come out, wrap them in the towel. It's your chance to hug them. They're going to be cold. They're going to want to be hugged. Hug them, rub them down, dry them up. Tell them then how much you love them. Mention then some things that you're so proud of them for doing. And the, the things that they did do that day that you weren't so proud of, reframe it. Instead of saying, and I didn't like when you, <laughs> reframe it. And I know you're working on listening better. I know this is a little bit hard for your age group because you're only two or you're only three. But don't worry. Tomorrow you're going to be a day older. And every day that's going to get easier for you. If you let them know that it's okay that they made a mistake and it's okay that they're struggling with not listening or whatever their issue is, that it's okay because tomorrow they're going to be older, that's all they want to be is older. And they also want to be good. They want to please. So if a child wants to please you, let him know what he has to do, right, in advance. So you give him that half an hour warning before he goes up, bring it down to 20 minutes, to 15, to 10. And then when it's time to go, they actually take his hand and we go together, telling stories, making the procedure fun. Now when you're getting into the pajamas and you're telling them about the day and you tuck them in and you tell them a story, perhaps you read them a story from bed. And again, touch is so important. Rub his head, find out where your child likes to be touched. Maybe you have a child who doesn't want to be touched. And you can say, if does this feel good? Do you like me to rub your back hard? Do you like me to rub your back soft? Show me, do it to me so I know, right? And then you'll know some, some kids like their backs tickled, some scratched, some don't want to be touched at all. Some like their head rubbed. Ask them, what feels good to you? What feels good to you? And then while you're talking to them and going over the day, do this. And then say to them, so here's and here's the deal. I'm going to give you a choice. One time. Door open, door closed. What do you prefer? And they're usually going to say door open because they want to escape. And you just say, okay, door open. I love you. I'll see you in the morning. And you give a kiss. And that's it. So ask me questions. What happens when he gets out of bed after you give him the kiss? I'll let you know that. In the next Bubby Pins. Oh, by the way, why is it called Bubby Pins? Because Bubby uses a lot of Bobby Pins and my children call them bubby pins. And I'll, every time I, I will show you another hack on how to put them in to your hair. Always straight edge against the scalp. The, the uh, wiggly part goes at the top. Do not open it. Do not separate it. Now, if you have a tight spot that you want to get it into, you want to make sure it holds, put it in and then twist your hand and reverse it. And it'll stay in like a lock. Watch. Bringing it down. Pushing it in. Switching it. And down. Boom. Stays in. That's Bubby Pins for today.